Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering pediatric congenital heart disorders. Now, this is going to be a multi-part series because there are uh, many disorders that you absolutely need to know. So I'm going to start with the acyanotic disorders. And as you can see here, under acyanotic, remember cyanosis, that's when that patient's um, turning blue because of lack of oxygen, right? That's cyanosis. When you put that A in front of cyanosis, A cyanosis, that means to be without, without that patient turning blue because of lack of oxygen. And I'm going to be explaining why shortly, but I promise you, you absolutely need to know the difference of the acyanotic disorders and the cyanotic disorders, those clinical manifestations, why we see this happening. So I'm going to be covering this in this multi-part series. Now, before we get started, please support my channel. Support me by liking this video, subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already, sharing my video on your social media platform or with a friend. Don't forget I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. I know I look crazy today. I'm giving my hair and my face a break. Don't worry about me. Look at this. Look at the screen. You'll be good. All right. So let's start with acyanotic, acyanosis. So this patient's not turning blue. So the signs and symptoms that we see in the disorders under acyanotic, this patient is not turning blue. It's very important to know. So these acyanotic disorders, I put an HF here to remind you that these patients are going to be um, displaying those signs and symptoms of heart failure. They are at risk for heart failure. Now, what are the disorders that fall under acyanotic? Um, atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, patent ductarius arteriosus, and atrial ventri ventricular canal. And the reason that they fall under the acyanotic, what's happening is increased pulmonary blood flow. That increased pulmonary blood flow, that gives them the signs and symptoms of heart failure. And I'm going to explain that in a little bit. I'm going to give you guys a visual picture. But for now, make sure you see these four, write them down and make sure that is due to increased pulmonary blood flow and it falls under acyanotic. Here, our coaction of aorta our aortic stenosis, and our pulmonic stenosis. That is also acyanotic, but why is it acyanotic? Obstruction to blood flow from the ventricles, and I'm about to show this to you in a second. What did I write here on the side? I wrote, that's why they're not turning blue. <laughs> that's why they're not turning blue, the patient's still getting oxygen. This will all make sense when I turn the page and I explain this all. It'll make sense in a second. So just make sure you know that which disorders fall under acyanotic. And now for a cyanotic, which means that patient is turning blue because of decreased oxygen, right? Now, there are two reasons. You have one, decreased uh, pulmonary blood flow, and the other one is due to mixed blood flow. So let's start with the decreased pulmonary um, blood flow, that patient's turning blue. What falls under that? The tetralogy of phthalate and the tricuspid estresia. Next, the mixed blood flow. What falls under the mixed blood flow? Transposition of great arteries, total anomalous pulmonary venous return, truncus arteriosus, hypoplastic left heart syndrome. I'm not going to go over all of these. I'm only going to go over the ones that show up the most often on NCLEX, ATI, and HESI. Now, I encourage you to know all of them because guess what? I don't write these exams, but I'm just going to cover the ones that show up the most. Make sure you know them. So with that being said, um, let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to specifically go over atrial septal defect and ventricular septal defect. Now I wrote up here, just to remind you, don't forget, these two disorders fall under acyanotic because again, you have to know what disorders fall under cyanotic and acyanotic. These two fall under acyanotic. We don't expect to see that patient uh, turning blue, but we do expect that patient to have what? Heart failure. And you're gonna understand why in a minute. So let's take a look and make this a little bigger. All right, so let's take a look. So you have your um, 
superior fear of vena cava, right? And unoxygenated blood is supposed to be coming to your right atrium. Remember the blood's unoxygenated, it's coming from the body. It's supposed to come through the right atrium, right ventricle, and it's supposed to be going through the pulmonary arteries out to the lungs to pick up oxygen because this is unoxygenated blood, right? But I want you to pay attention to where you see the circle. Look at what's happening in the circle. There is a hole from that left atria to the right atria. So here you are, oxygenated blood, because over here in the right atria, this is oxygenated blood that's coming from the lungs, right? It's coming from the lungs. It's going through, um, did I call this the right atria, the left atria? You guys know what I meant. I'm sorry. I need to put a left and right because I will always forget. This is your left. This is your right. Remember, it's always opposite of your left and right, right? So, un, uh, excuse me, oxygenated blood that just came from the lungs. It's oxygenated. It's coming from the left atrium down to the left ventricle. And it's supposed to go through that semilunar valve to the artery, aorta, to go to the body, to the brain, to the kidney, to the spleen. What? To perfuse all of those tissues. But look at what's happening. There is a hole between that um that the left atria and the right atria and now we have oxygenated blood being mixed with unoxygenated blood look at this guys this is unoxygenated blood that's blue this red is the oxygenated blood that's coming through that hole from the left atrium and this is why the patient with atrial septal defect is not turning blue they're not turning cyanotic they're not being cyanotic because there is some amount of oxygenated blood and that's why it falls under a cyanosis does that make sense so let's keep going obviously this is why it's called atrial septal defect because that defect is where between the two atria from the left to the right look at the description it says abnormal opening between the atria allowing blood from the higher pressure left atrium this is where the higher pressure is higher pressure left atrium to flow into the lower pressure right atrium right here. There are two types of ASD. Um, if you're still in school right now, you're taking PEDS, make sure you know it. I don't know if your instructor is going to um, give those two types on your test, excuse me, those three types on your test. However, for the big exam, such as ATI, HESI, NCLEX, I've never seen them ask specifically about those three. What they ask about is the main one, which is your atrial septal defect. But I don't write your test, guys. So anyway, they give you the uh, three. Let's move on to clinical manifestations. Patients with atrial septal defect, what do we expect them to look like? Patients may be asymptomatic. We may not even see any symptoms. Remember, they're still getting some of that oxygenated blood that's mixing with the unoxygenated blood. They may develop heart failure. And that's why when I scroll up here, under, well, um, above, I put acyanotic and heart failure because for these two, you need to remember they're not turning blue and they're at risk for heart failure. Let's keep going. They may develop heart, heart failure. They're it a characteristic. When you see that word characteristic, as in classic, as in hallmark, you need to know it. There's a characteristic systolic murmur with a fixed split second heart sound. What's the characteristic song we're going to hear? Systolic murmur with a fixed split second heart sound. You see this, you better be thinking atrial septal defect. Let's keep going. Um, surgical treatment, surgical patch closure is done to moderate, to, is done for moderate to large defects. Open repair with cardiopulmonary bypass is usually performed before school age. Non-surgical management, ASD2 closure with a device during cardiac catheterization is becoming commonplace and it can be done as an outpatient procedure. That's your atrial septal defect in a nutshell. Now let's compare this to ventricular septal defects because remember up here, we we're talking about the atria, right? Now we're talking about the ventricles. Look at where the hole is. The hole now is between that right ventricle and that left ventricle. And remember, that um, left ventricle over here, the pressure is higher. So the pressure, since it's higher, all of this oxygenated blood, because look where the blood just came from. The blood just came from the lungs. This oxygenated blood, instead of going through the semilunar valve and going up the aorta to um, 
perfuse all of the organs such as the brain, the pancreas, the liver. Look at where some of that oxygenated blood is going into. It's going into that right ventricle and it's mixing with the unoxygenated blood. And again, because that it's mixing with the unoxygenated blood and the patient's getting some of that oxygenated blood, we don't expect to see that patient turning blue due to lack of um, oxygen, oxygen due to lack of perfusion, right? And so that's why ventricular septal defect also falls under a cyanotic. So description, abnormal opening between the right and left ventricles, and we see it right here, right? Remember, this is our left ventricle, this is our right ventricle. So it's an abnormal opening. We can see it. It's right here. Pathophysiology, blood flows through the defect into the pulmonary artery. The increased blood volume is pumped into the lungs. Just them telling us that there's an increased volume that's being pumped into the lungs. Think about, think about uh, um, physiologically, what's that doing to the heart and the lungs? We're expecting that patient to have symptoms of heart failure. Heart failure is common. Of course it is. There is a characteristic. Now look at what's characteristic for ventricular septal defect. Loud, hollow systolic murmur that's best heard at the left of the sternal border. So when you see this, guys, loud, holy, hollow systolic murmur heard best at the left sternal border, you know they're talking about ventricular septal defect and not something else. That is classically what you'll hear. Surgical management, the procedure of choice is complete repair. That wasn't so hard, was it? Now that you guys have seen the difference between these two, it makes more sense if you guys rewind this video and go back to this, it will make more sense to you. How under acyanotic, you see how I put heart failure, we have increased pulmonary blood flow and that's our atri atrial septal defect and ventricular septal defect. Those are the two I've gone over on this video. Part two, I'm gonna go over the other two, which is patent ductus arteriosus and atrial ventricular canal. Guys, this was a short video, but it was to the point. I'm showing you what you guys need to know in regards to the pathophysiology and the clinical manifestations for this disorder. Please, in the comment section, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like me to cover on future videos to come. Don't forget, you guys can catch me covering different types of questions on my social media platforms almost daily, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. My live is coming up Sunday, August 21st at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The book that I'm going to be using, I've done a couple of videos on that already. Look in the comment section. And I've had a couple uh, students say that you can get this, the PDF for free at zlibrary.com, either zlibrary.com or zlibrary.org, one of them, you can get it for free. So I encourage you get this book so that you can follow along on my live. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.